I guess that was enough fundamentals to last you for a while. So to switch things up, the next two videos will be action-packed and we'll create the rig mechanisms. A wrist twist, a shoulder twist, hips control and advanced foot setup. I think you'll be surprised at how easy it is. Let's get right into it. The first problem that we want to solve is the wrist twist. If I select the hand and enable the rotation gizmo and rotate the arm on the y-axis, we get the so-called candy wrapper effect. In reality, the part of the forearm that is close to the hand twists along with the hand, and the part close to the elbow is mostly static. Try this with your own arm. Make it into an observation exercise. Observation will help you create better rigs. The way this is usually solved is by adding a bone in the wrist that twists along with the hand, while the main lower arm bone stays static. This is not exactly anatomically correct, but we only use anatomy as a reference. The goal is to create the effect we observe in the simplest way possible. I'll enable overlays and reset the transforms. I'll go to edit mode and I want a bone that is aligned exactly with the lower arm. It has the same orientation, but it is just shorter than it, about one third. Here is an easy way to do that. Press Shift D and duplicate the bone and then right click to cancel the movement. So we did duplicate the bone and placed it exactly at the same position as the original bone. And then right click again and choose subdivide. And then for number of cuts, choose two. Then I'll enable X-ray to see my bones. And now I have three bones. I'll hide the big original bone. And because I only want one twist bone, I'm going to select these two and delete them. Then Alt H to unhide the lower arm. Click a couple of times here to select your twist bone. Press F2 and name it lower arm twist dot L. And generally, I want this bone to move with the lower arm. So I'll shift select the lower arm and press Control P, keep offset. And as a result, in pose mode, if I rotate the lower arm, the twist bone moves with it. I'll select the lower arm and hide it because it makes selecting this twist bone difficult. And next, I want to set a constraint on this twist bone that will make it rotate based on the rotation of the hand. So let's select the hand, shift select the twist bone, press Control shift c Again, this means that the constraint will go on the last selected bone and the first selected bone will become the target or the controller of the constraint bone. Can you find a constraint that may help us do what we want to do? Well, there is one called copy rotation. And that is what we want. Before we click on it, let's look at this list of constraints. It is quite a list and it may look intimidating, but we can simplify it. For example, the constraints on the left under motion tracking, we will not use for rigging. You already learned inverse kinematics as well as copy location. And we are about to use copy rotation and copy location, copy rotation and copy scale are constraints that you'll be using a lot. And we'll also add dumped track and copy transforms to this list of common constraints. The rest of the constraints are also powerful and useful and we'll learn more about them, but ignore them for now. And this should take a big feeling of weight off your shoulders. Now choose copy rotation. And the constraint bone moved slightly. If I go to the constraints, I can click on this eye icon to enable and disable the constraint and you can see the effect. And the reason for this offset is because of the target and owner orientations. By default, they are set to world space and world space, which means that the orientation of this constraint bone copies the orientation of the target bone exactly as they appear in the viewport. If you look at the options for target and owner, you'll see that there are a bunch of options. And again, this can seem very overwhelming. But here is another simplification that you're going to love. 95% of the time, you will either use world space and world space or local space and local space. 
and only in rare cases you will use other combinations of target and owner orientations. Let's switch target to local space and owner to local space. And now our constrained bone will no longer be offset because it copies the local rotation of the hand bone. Since the hand is currently in its rest pose, the twist bone also stays in its default rest pose. But when I start rotating the hand bone now, the twist bone will rotate just like it because it is copying its rotation. If I only rotate the hand on the y-axis, this is the exact effect we are looking for. But the problem is that the twist bone rotates with the hand bone on all axes. So select the twist bone, and in the copy rotation options, we have axis. The twist axis is the y-axis, so if we just disable x and z, and then rotate the hand, then the twist bone only twists with the hand, and it doesn't copy its other axis. Now, you can take this as the solution. However, if I double tap R and rotate the hand at an extreme angle, you'll see a flipping of the twist bone. This only happens at extreme rotations. So if it doesn't bother you, you can keep it like this and you will have a very simple solution. But let's try to fix it and learn some useful fundamentals. And as for why it flips, these are mathematical problems in rigging that probably only developers understand fully. As a rigger, you mainly just accept them and learn to avoid them. And so to improve this, I'm going to select the hand and shift select the twist, press Ctrl Shift C and use a dump track constraint. As I mentioned, this is a very commonly used constraint. Nothing seems to happen because the effect of dump track is to make the constraint bone point at the target bone, which it already is, so seemingly nothing changes. If I select the hand and double tap R and try to find this flipping of the twist bone, it still happens. So at the flip state, I'm going to select the twist bone and enable the X and Z axis. And this gives us a stable solution that does not flip easily. An important property of constraints is that they are stacked on top of each other. Just like mesh modifiers, the constraint stack is evaluated from top to bottom, which means that the lower constraints will override the ones above them if they affect the same type of transform. Both copy rotation and dump track affect the rotation of the bone, and so this copy rotation constraint makes the twist bone copy all rotation of the hand. Then dump track on top of it overrides copy rotation and makes the twist bone always point at the hand bone. But a nice property of dump track is that it doesn't influence the Y rotation value of a bone. It's just how it works. So the Y rotation from copy rotation is not overridden. In effect, the twist bone rotates with the hand bone only on the Y axis, which is exactly what we wanted. Let's clear the rotation and press Alt-H. Now our mechanism is in place. We just have to apply weights for the twist bone. So I'm going to go to object mode, select the body, shift select the rig, control P and automatic weights. Now when you test it, you may feel disappointed by the result. Don't worry, we're going to fix it. I'll go to object mode, select my rig, shift select the body and go to weight paint mode. And part of the problem has to do with weights. Automatic weights is applied based on the size of the bone. And so this big lower arm bone has a lot of influence over the whole area. So Alt and click on the twist bone. I'll set my weight paint settings like in level one, brush to add, strength to 0.2 or so, enable auto normalize under options, and this character is perfectly symmetrical, so I'll have the mirror options enabled. Now I'm going to click in this area. I'll paint this part of the lower arm fully red like this, and then shift and click in the middle to create a softer transition. We still lose plenty of volume in the middle of this lower arm, one twist bone is simply not enough, so in level 3 we'll do more complicated setup with multiple twist bones. But there is a solution that will work for a single bone. 
I'll go to object mode, select the body, go to modifiers, and find the armature modifier, which was added automatically when we set automatic weights. And I'm going to enable the preserve volume option. And like magic, our arm looks perfect now. And you may be excited and see this as a magic button. And yes, it is awesome, but check this out. I'll go to my rig pose mode and raise the arm. And notice this bulge here. That is caused by the preserve volume option. But that's okay, we'll keep it on and I'll show you how to fix this. And this is something that even advanced users don't know, so look forward to it. Okay, the wrist was the toughest mechanism to build. We had to learn some new ideas, but it gets easier from here. Next, we're going to work on the shoulder. So let's see what the problem is. The problem is quite similar to the wrist. If I select the upper arm and rotate it on the Y axis, we'll get some unwanted deformation in the shoulder. Now, this is almost solved by the preserve volume option. You'll see it gets much worse without it. So it depends on the character. Sometimes with simple characters, just using preserve volume may solve the whole problem. Generally, the thicker the character is, the more we need additional bones. So let's do it for practice. I'll enable overlays, go to pose mode, and reset my pose. Anatomically, the shoulder or deltoid muscle is attached to the clavicle and scapula and so it doesn't twist much with the actual upper arm bone. Make sure to observe your own arm. For this setup, again, we need a shorter bone perfectly aligned with the upper arm bone. So again, we can go to edit mode, select the upper arm bone, shift D, duplicate it, right click to cancel the movement, right click to subdivide, give it two cuts so that we get three bones, hide the big bone, select these bones that we don't need, delete them, name this bone, upper arm, twist, dot L, and Alt H to unhide all bones. And so the goal of our setup will be to create a bone inside the shoulder area, which moves and rotates with the upper arm, but it doesn't twist with it. In other words, it doesn't follow its Y rotation. So first I want to figure out the parenting of this new bone. If I parent it to the upper arm, that will make it move with the upper arm, but we want the twist bone to ignore the Y rotation of the upper arm. So if I parent them, I would have to come up with some mechanism to counter rotate the small bone. I think there are easier solutions. Instead of parenting the twist bone to the upper arm, I'm going to parent it to the shoulder bone because it is the next closest bone and we also want the twist bone to move along with the shoulder. It makes sense, so let's give it a try. Control P and keep offset will be grayed out because this bone is actually already parented to the shoulder because we duplicated it from the main upper arm bone. So parenting is done. So now if I rotate the shoulder, the upper arm and the twist rotate with it. Now I just want to automate this twist bone. And now again, we want the twist bone to follow the rotation of the arm, but ignore its Y rotation. Can you think of one of our main constraints that does that? Yes, that is dumped track. Dump track will make the constraint bone follow all rotation of the target bone, except for the Y axis. So I could select my upper arm bone, which will become the target, and then shift select the twist bone, which will get the constraint, control shift C and choose dumped track. And now if I test it, it won't work. Why is that? Let's go to the constraint. Dump track makes the constraint bone point at the head of the target bone. So it is pointing to here, and that's why it doesn't move at all. It's already constantly pointing at that point. So we'll make it point at the tail of the target bone. So from here to here. And now we have the twist bone following the upper arm bone. But if I rotate on the Y axis, it stays completely stationary. And if you want the simplest solution possible, this is it. 
Now, it's always good to poke holes in your rig and try to find problems. So I'll try rotating some of the bones and it looks good. If I try to move the upper arm, I'm actually able to move it, but the twist bone does not move with it. This is not something this rig is meant to do, but let's try to solve it anyway. What can we use to constrain this twist bone to move with the upper arm bone? It is copy location. So select the upper arm, shift select the twist bone, control shift C, copy location, and it's done. But the twist bone seems to lose its orientation for some reason. Let's select it and look at the stack of constraints. Dump track is above copy location, which means that it is evaluated first. So what happens is, if I disable copy location for a second, first dump track orients this twist bone towards the tail of the upper arm. Then on top of that, copy location is evaluated, which I can simulate by enabling the constraint. So now the twist bone moved to the location of the upper arm, but it kept the exact orientation from the previous constraint. To fix this, all we need to do is move copy location above dump track. Now copy location is evaluated first, so the twist bone will always move along with the upper arm, and then on top of that, it will evaluate the dump track, which will point it towards the tail of the upper arm. And that is the exact behavior we were aiming at. So I'll select the upper arm and press Alt-R and Alt-G to clear location and rotation. And we can call these mechanisms done. I hope you see how there is a lot we can achieve with just this subset of constraints. Now I have to symmetrize the twist bones. So go to edit mode, select the twists, deselect anything else, right click, symmetrize, and back in pose mode, we'll have twist bones on both sides. I also want to apply weights to make the shoulder twist take effect. So I'll go to object mode, select the body, shift select the rig, control P, automatic weights. And by the way, this will reset the custom weights that we painted here for the lower arm, but that's okay because we'll have a focused weight painting session in one of the next videos. Now, I'll test the shoulder and it's looking good. To really make it work, I'll have to do some weight painting. But you don't need to follow along here because we will most likely reset these weights anyway. And as I said, we'll do the actual weight painting in a special weight painting video. Good work. Take your time here and make sure that you understand the constraints that we used. Copy location, copy rotation, and dump track, and also why we use them to the best of your ability. In the next video, we'll create two more mechanisms. The hips control is going to be super easy. The foot setup looks complex, but really it's just a bunch of parented bones. Creating this mechanism will help you understand bone parenting better. When you're ready, let's move on.